if you are prepared, I will just begin sharing my screen. Oh, God. No. <laughs> oh, God, no. Okay, well, already this is clearly a very controversial topic. <laughs> you are going to lose friends. Welcome to Dog Talk Learn. Today we'll be, we will be exploring some great dog qualities and then learning a bit about a dog breed that exemplifies some of these qualities. Ideally, a dog should be tall enough that its companion can give it affection without suffering back strain. Some dogs are willing to make up for their height deficiency by fitting comfortably in the lap of a sitting person, but simply cannot be loved by someone who is standing. <laughs> <laughs> there is hypothetically a maximum height at which a dog would become difficult to pet, but it is yet to be seen. Uh, pretty much all dogs are handsome. If your dog is wet and unattractive, your local pet shop may have sold you a fish by mistake. Ideally, a dog should contain the secrets of the universe for structural and composition reasons. However, they should also have the wisdom to never share these secrets directly. All dogs have some good qualities, but what kind of dog could possibly possess all these qualities at once? <laughs> Meet the Borzoi, alternatively known as the Russian Wolfhound or Siberian Noodle Horse. <laughs> During the 1917 Russian Revolution, many Borzois were killed because they were seen as symbols of the Russian aristocracy. Luckily, many had been given as gifts shortly before the First World War, and those outside of Russia prospered, although they faced their own hardships in the Americas. Oh. Here, I bring you cabbage. <laughs> they do not like cabbage. They actually prefer carrots and cucumbers. Borzois are more like a horse to me. <laughs> mm. They are not like no noodle horse. Borzois are sight hounds and bred to hunt in packs. Uh, bred to hunt packs of wolves in trios. The Borzois would startle the wolves and pursue them until they got one to break from the pack. They would pin the wolf so it could be captured by the hunter alive. The leader would catch it by the neck, and the other two would hold it by its ears or defend against other wolves that may still be circling. Jesus. Conversely, the only way to capture a borzoi is with a trio of corgi. <laughs> <laughs> That's a dog. <laughs> Dogs shouldn't be able to get that tall. The short, pitiful legs of the corgi make an excellent counter to the borzoi. <laughs> yeah, but he's got an outfit on. He's a cheerleader. A little cheerleader, yeah. <laughs> he's a cheerleader. They average 80 pounds and uh, on average are about 33 inches tall. This is uh, spread out between the genders. The females tend to be quite a bit shorter and the males quite a bit taller, so I just took the average of the average. Uh -huh. yeah. They have a 270 degree vision because their their eyes are sort of on the sides of their head. And their, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And their fur is much more like hair, which makes them um, not hypoallergenic per se, but people tend to have much less severe allergies to them. They are the seventh fastest dog breed, and they are able to hover by flexing their forelegs, their hind legs, and their tail all at once, as as shown in the picture. Does he seem like anything more like a dog? Borzois also have a very distinct occipital bone at the back of the head, like an awesome fuzzy pterodactyl. Uh. You, you can see the occipital bone uh -huh. at the top there. Yep. Part of the reason they seem so graceful <laughs> is because they have a tendency to skip through walking and pacing behaviors. Here we see walking. Here's amble. They don't do that much either. Pacing. Trotting. Uh, and they tend to go straight into a trot. They use this gait most of the time. And then they skip through gan canter. 
all the way to gallop when they do break into a run. Mm -hmm. They are dedicated sprinters. Even greyhounds can often be seen in a canter. Uh, I suspect Borzoi legs are just so long that a trot will do for just about anything short of a flat-out run. Uh, frequently asked questions. Oh, but, but on a side note, if you look at the dog on the right, it is in the trot foot pattern, even though it is clearly moving at a slow walking pace. Do they swim? No. They, they like the water, but what they do is not swimming. No. No. They drown that's... slowly. <laughs> I mean, it's not drowning. It's, it's just not. That one on the right is clearly not having a good time. He's... No. no, he's loving slowly. it. No, his knees are slowly buckling. You can't see. <laughs> he loves he's it. He can reach the ground because he's no, so you're tall. See... Yeah, you're seeing his first knees. That's in the middle of a lake. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> look, look, how, look how happy the one on the left you know is. That dog has <laughs> oh, It's all knees. That's all knees. Like... <laughs> their noses take three years to grow in fully and grow to be about 10 inches when they are puppies they look like microwaved gummy bears but uh, <laughs> don't be alarmed they don't need to be stretched they will grow on their own no special stretching is required to get them that long they will longify naturally over time God, the one on the left. <laughs> however the all of them <laughs> all of them <laughs> However, during this time, their mischief gland also comes in. Beware their tricks. As you can see, the one, the one in the middle is, is very I mean, convincing. Is elder god? Because it really feels like it is. <laughs> Beware the riddles of the boss. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Here we see some mischief as on the left, she pretends to be the Krampus. And on the right, <laughs> imitates the ghost of a Victorian widow, eternally vigilant for the return of a husband who will never come. For comparison, Her husband died in war. Krampus and Victorian Widow. Krampus impression, Victorian Widow impression. I'm sure you can see the resemblance. It's oh, that's painfully easy, Berkeley. It's uncanny. They're uh, various nightmare forms. Nature's best impersonators, second only to the cuttlefish. Are there any famous Borzoi? <clears throat> yes. An honorary member of Pink Floyd was a Borzoi. Nobs the Borzoi performed live on stage with the band. Benjamin Guggenheim, pictured on the right, the dog, not the, uh, the man, <laughs> uh, belonged to the captain of the Titanic. Uh, he, w he was not there uh, oh, when the yeah, Titanic yeah. sank. Yeah. How, How convenient! How did that work out? I'm concerned for this. Word. Did the Borzoi <laughs> warn them as they got on? Yes, but as, they would a, not listen. As a future seer? Borzois are, are cursed like Cassandra. They tell the future, but they will not be believed. Right. Just found a corner and walked through it. Into the void. Teddy Roosevelt was famously given one by the ambassador to Russia. He immediately killed him. <laughs> And, Bor and uh, fictional Borzois are featured in the works of uh, Leo Tolstoy's 1869 novel, War and Peace, F. Scott Fitzgerald, The Beautiful and the Damned, George Bernard Shaw's Everybody's Political What's What, and also Falcor from Never Any Story is pretty clearly a long boy. They have many special skills, besides uh, the singing and the... <laughs> retrieval of Pringles from the bottle of pr bottoms of Pringles cans. They also often work as therapy dogs. There is a foundation that pairs them with veterans for this very purpose. That's terrifying. Uh, they are fairly <laughs> quiet and uh, calm creatures. My last Borzoi, Reggie, would only ever bark one bark at a time, and then he would seem to think the matter had been settled. He just had like a <laughs> very deep thunder bark. So whenever he he felt the need to speak up, it would just be woof. <laughs> <laughs> and, and nothing more needed to be said. <laughs> it's hard to say what is best about the Borzoi. There is so much to choose from. <laughs> there is so much to love. Steven. Salvador Dali had a pet anteater, but probably only because they were out of Borzois the day he went to the pet shop, and anteater was oh. the closest they could come up with. It's just a short borzoi. That's all an anteater. Yeah. It's slightly less ants, weirdly enough. Mm -hmm. 
It can be pretty hard to find borzoi as they are rare and not especially prolific, so most of them come from kennels. Kennels give weird eccentric names. For example, my dog, featured on the on the right, not the far right, that is me, uh, but sort of in the in the in the middle there. Remarkably similar. Uh, Reggie's full name was Regal Dragon Bay Mings because the kennel required mythical creature names. What? Oh, it's like they know they're not real dogs. <laughs> uh, so if you meet a borzoi, they probably have a ridiculous secret name. That's a little tidbit you can ask about the next time you find yourself in conversation with a borzoi. You're welcome. Uh -huh. Here you can see me rolling my eyes <laughs> for some obnoxious comment this judge made while awarding Reggie the last few points he needed for his championship. The comment was, that's not a dog. <laughs> this whole thing's a sham. Why did you bring this colt in here? <laughs> Their curlier hair is part of the reason they are much lower maintenance than similar long hair breeds like Afghans, which require constant brushing. Reggie really only needed to be brushed uh, in shedding season to keep down the amount of stray hair in the house. They oh. do. <laughs> what the? Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> they do very little damage to furnishings. They are seldom chewers or clars. It's a sleep paralysis demon. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and they are they are very clever. My my mom would always uh, tell Reggie no feet on the couch, so we'd go up and lean on the couch and look at her and she'd say no feet on the sofa and he would sort of gently lean until he flopped over onto the couch with his feet hanging off and then he'd pop up his head and look at her and she'd say no feet and he would sort of shimmy up and put his elbow on the armrest and look at her and she'd say fine but no feet that's really cute <laughs> he was very clever the mm -hmm. fact that he could put his elbow on the armrest and not his foot is also terrifying. <laughs> and, then, and then he just whispered silently to her, I have seen your death in my visions. <laughs> All about I, have, I have seen your futures. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the, the, note card, the note card on this one literally says, Your hurtful comments are as cold as the depths of space from which they come. <laughs> cold so very cold so cold but that's the way they like it snowboy oh, snow so to summarize they are very well behaved easy for a skilled trainer because they are not uh, because although they are stubborn, they are not distractible or unintelligent, which means they are easier to train than most dogs if you are firm and know how to motivate them well. They are definitely more companion than pet. They do have a slight tendency towards stomach issues, uh, bloating, and possible twisting. Uh, and they actually require much less brushing than most people think, but they do shed a fair bit. You can see I've, I've edited this, uh, this rating board that I found to... Uh, <laughs> Reflect. The false news biased rating that you found. You fixed was it, was it, was it really? That's right. Was it really joyful? Uh, yeah, brushing equals joy. The end. <laughs> this is uh, this is Reggie and Turk. I also, if we if we have a little extra time, you might wish to oh, see right. some uh, Borzoi jumps jump. in slow motion. It sounds haunting. No, it is. No, look at this. Look at this. No. Perfectly natural. Oh god. Not physics defying at all. <laughs> For him to just disappear through the ground now into the void. Yeah. <laughs> His whole body stretches and elongates to one long, thin white line and then disappears entirely. <laughs> just clip into the nether like <laughs> That's what oh that's what the Loch Ness monster is. Just a Damn. bunch of boys all gone swimming. Just it's a long one. horse. They don't <laughs> they, just... they don't swim, Gavin. Oh, yeah. they don't yeah, they, they can <laughs> walk on the bottom. <laughs> they slowly drown. <laughs> How many knees do I require? Existing. <laughs> they just grow their legs to the bottom of the lake. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> you, you see for a moment there, that one employed the, uh, the hovering technique from slide 15. <laughs> well, there you have it. Thank you, Berkeley. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah.